Hey, it's Irreverent Aegis here, and in this video I want to welcome you to my inaugural installment of the Fake Tank DLC Dungeon Challenge, where my group and I run through the veteran DLC dungeons with 4 DPS. What is it they always say? Why run a healer when you can just run 3 DPS? Well, let's catch everyone up to the modern era. Why run a tank or a healer when you can just run 4 DPS? For this challenge, I am using a Sork tank build I call the Glass Aegis 2.0, formerly known as the Glass Paladin, and if you'd like, you can check out the build video and parse on my YouTube channel. In summary, it's a double ice staff tank that can survive the nastiest of hits thanks to Bound Aegis, keep its health topped off due to crit surge, and still manage to parse for 37k on the 3 million dummy while maintaining aggro the entire time. For you naysayers who want to try to tell me the role of a tank isn't just to survive an old aggro, no shit. So just for you, this build has incredibly high brittle uptime, and is able to keep up all three elements of Catalyst with ease, all while dishing out way more damage in actual content than you would ever get from simply buffing the other DPS in your group. So if you're one of those assholes, please go back into your hole and come out when you have something actually interesting to contribute. Anyway, as you can see, this video is all about Black Drake Villa, and just for fun, we decided we were going to give all three hard modes a try. I did want to point out one difference between my build video and what I decided to do in this dungeon. I did go with Death Dealer's Feet instead of a two-piece Monster Helm. Let's jump ahead to the first hard mode. To be completely honest, we expected that this first hard mode was actually going to be the most difficult one in the entire dungeon, and we were surprised by the fact that we were able to actually beat it in just three attempts, as this was our first time even attempting it with 4 DPS. If you're hoping to get a little bit of a walkthrough on how to do this hard mode the correct way, that is, you know, with the tank, this is not the video for you. But you can check out my Ardent Bibliophile title run from the tank perspective to show you how to get it done with the tank. The hardest part about doing this on the Glass Aegis was standing on this lava geyser and surviving it. So we had a strategy. I would stand on it, hit Bound Aegis, and we have another sword running the heal burger. That's the only heal we have for the group. And that was able to get me through. Now, of course, I am going to eat it here, but I would have died on any tank if I did that. That was just a stupid mistake. When he slams the ground, if you get hit by his actual hammer, you die pretty much instantly. Pretty much no matter how much health you have. You're supposed to wait for it, then go stand on it, and then block the lava geyser so your group doesn't die. What we did here, because our damage was so high, we started our transformations a lot earlier. We normally start them around 50% or 60% with 3 DPS, or maybe 45% if we're running 2 DPS. But since we had 4 DPS, we actually started our transformations at 80%, and you can see just how quickly this dude's health dropped. It was incredible. Here is our last transform, and we're just gonna go full ham on him, and you can see he just gets wrecked really fast when you're running 4 DPS. So, that was awesome. Not Nothing too much on this one on how to survive as the Glass Aegis. Mostly it's just that one attack that you have to look out for and then block through with Bound Aegis. Other than that, you can kind of kite around a little bit as he doesn't actually attack you as much as you'd expect. Alright, let's move on to the next fight. Because I like to hear myself talk, I decided I'm going to show you footage from all the side bosses in this dungeon as well. We wanted the ability to turn into ice avatars and freeze things with the ice avatar synergy, because with 4 DPS, why wouldn't you want to just have the ability to DPS without having to worry about any mechanics when everything's frozen? Pretty much it's just a parse when everything takes extra damage, so this was actually the perfect dungeon to feature this build. So for this avatar of Vigor, or the second side boss, I'm pretty sure I blocked one time the entire thing, and the rest was just me parsing on it. There was my block. That growing AoE looks like it might be scary, so I did block. But other than that, you can see how quickly this thing went down. Now we've jumped to the third side boss, and I'm pretty sure this guy barely got off any attacks. I think he hit me with a light attack two times, and then he does this AoE, which looks like it probably hurts the whole group a lot. But before he was actually able to get off very many ticks with this AoE that start there, he was already dead. So, that was that one. Now we're going to move on to the second hard mode. And the second hard mode, we thought would be fairly easy, but it was actually the hardest of the three hard modes. So let's show you that one. This fight actually took us four attempts to do with our 4 DPS strategy. 
What made it so difficult was the fact that Captain Geminus has this attack, I believe it's called Quick Strike, that hits you if you're not blocking for over 20,000 damage at my level of mitigation, of course, because I'm wearing light armor. So, pretty much I had to be very careful about blocking, so when I noticed that the boss was turning around to do other things, I was able to go through a full DPS rotation, but as soon as Captain Geminus faced me, I pretty much had to block cast the whole time. The second thing we learned is that we couldn't just go completely full burn strategy, which is what we tried the first several attempts, where we said, okay, let's just burn her down, push phases, and not worry about any of the ads that come up. Well, the ads ended up being pretty overwhelming because we weren't focusing them. So what we decided to do was we went pretty much a full burn instantly, got her down to 70% as quickly as possible, killed the first Atro that came up when she went invulnerable, and then we kind of broke off a little bit to handle the ads. Then, after we did that, then it became a little bit easier, because I already knew from trial and error what I needed to block, what I needed to block, and what I needed to roll dodge. So that ended up working out pretty well for us. Now, from playing on the original Glass Paladin, and what continues even with the Glass Aegis to this day, is that the longer the fight, the worse the Glass Aegis performs. Mostly because you have to keep up a full damage roto to be useful, but you run out of resources a lot if you're doing that, and you need those resources to block with your Ice Staff and to hit Bound Aegis. So, you'll see in this fight, because it lasted a lot longer than we wanted it to, because we couldn't go full damage on her, you'll see that I end up using Roll Dodge a lot more frequently than in other fights. Here you'll see that my magic is pretty much gone, so I try not to block, but then I get hit by that quick strike and instantly die. So, that was a problem, but we did have someone who was holding on to that Ice Avatar synergy, so that way we could freeze everything at 30%. But since I died, he hit that synergy right away instead. So we didn't really need the synergy anyway, because we have 4 DPS and burning down this air atro and handling the ads isn't really that big of a deal. So that allows us to actually keep up the transformation for when this ends. And when it ends, we'll be able to pretty much just burn down Captain Geminus right away, because she'll be frozen, and again, everything else will be frozen, and we will have 4 DPS. I made the mistake here of not refreshing Crit Surge when I had the opportunity to, so I did die because while I expected it to be healed by my own Crit Strikes, I wasn't getting healed at all, so I died a slow and painful death. But again, somebody res me right away. So here, I'm going to transform, and what we're going to do, we're going to freeze everything, and we're going to pretty much just burn down the boss. I think my team couldn't find Captain Geminus for a little while. So once I found her, I froze her, and we went full hand and pretty much took care of the rest of her health rather quickly. So that fight again was the hardest one, but overall it took us only four attempts so it wasn't that bad to do with our four DPS strat. Now I've jumped ahead to the final hard mode here, Pyroturge and Kratos. With four DPS I expected this to be by far the easiest hard mode because Pyroturge and Kratos didn't really have any threatening abilities to me. So I wasn't really too concerned about tanking, and also, we just needed to get Pyroturge and Kratos to 60% before he went through the wall and we initiated the easiest second phase of a hard mode ever. If you haven't seen my how to tank the hard mode for Pyroturge and Kratos, I outlined the strategy where we just successively freeze the boss and don't have to deal with a single mechanic. With 4 DPS, it'll be even easier, because our damage is going to be so incredibly high that we really won't need to worry about a single thing. What's really funny about the second phase of this fight is how ridiculously well it went with 4 DPS, despite the huge mistakes we made during the phase. The two biggest mistakes that we made were, one, our first Transformer never dropped his ultimate. We're supposed to go in and drop our ultimates in the beginning, because when you transform, it steals all of your ultimate. So he didn't drop the ultimate, so he lost it when he transformed. So we were missing an entire ultimate. The second major mistake, and you would think this would be a really big deal, is I never reapplied a major breach, so I never hit Ellie Drain again. So we didn't have major breach for the entire fight. And then I realized also that I never reactivated Crit Surge, so I also didn't have major sorcery. I just had major prophecy for my potion, which is a crit pot. 
So even with all that, we only needed to transform and freeze the boss three times to kill it. You'll see I used my freeze at the very end, but the boss is already dead at that point, so it was unnecessary. So even without Major Breach, even without a tank, a traditional tank buffing the group, we still were able to wreck that boss really quickly, which is kind of awesome considering, again, we were doing a 4 DPS strategy. So you can see how much better 4 DPS can be if you can go full ham on something than 3 DPS in a tank. Now you may be wondering, since we did all of the side bosses and all three of the hard modes, if we attempted and succeeded doing the secret hard mode at the end. And the answer is a resounding, hell no, I didn't expect we'd be able to do it, and I was drastically, emphatically correct. That guy hits way too hard to do as the Glass Aegis. We tried a couple strategies, you only have like five or six attempts, and not only that, but the dot he does is ridiculous. It's hard to do that without a healer in the first place, let alone without a tank and without a healer. So we gave it a shot. It went just as badly as we expected it to. Um, so I'm not going to show any footage of that. But if you enjoyed watching this video and enjoyed watching the fake tank DLC dungeon challenge, or if you like any of my other content, feel free to leave a comment, hit the like button, or if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel. You have earned